If you like the monkeys and if you like the Muppet movie, you've got a special man to thank. Director James Frawley. <laughs> I think that's my first musical introduction. <laughs> Aww. Already we set the bar really, really high. All right, now... I wanted to ask you about your career. You you started in New York with the improv group The Premise, then made the transition over to Hollywood. How did a comedy actor get the attention of Bob Rafelson and Bert Schneider, the creators of The Monkees, to direct their brand new TV show? Well, actually, uh, the improvisational company The Premise was not my first career move. I was an actor in New York for a few years. I w was on Broadway with Lawrence Olivier. I uh, worked uh, with Angela Lansbury in a musical called Anyone Can Whistle by Stephen Sondheim. I was with the uh, Actors Studio and Lee Strasberg. I studied at the Neighborhood Playhouse with Sandy Meisner. And I went to Carnegie Mellon for a BFA. So I was a trained actor who was cast in the premise and worked in the premise off-Broadway in New York, uh, we won a couple of OBs, which are like Tony's, only off-Broadway. And we were asked to come to Los Angeles. So a few of us in the, uh, in the premise took the trip to L.A. And at the Ivar Theater in L.A., we opened to very good reviews. Only four members of the cast. It was a, a small improvisational theater, very political and uh, very topical. So we would get suggestions from the audience and improvise, and we also had set scenes that we did. In any case, one night, Bob Ravelson and Bert Schneider were in the audience, and uh, they kind of liked my work. They thought I was a funny guy, entertaining, interesting, good point of view. So they asked me to dinner after the show, and I went with them to a restaurant called Dan Tanner's, and we sat around, a great restaurant, we sat around talking about art and theater and movies, especially French movies, which we both, all three of us loved. Uh, 400 Blows, uh, also Antonioni, Italian. Uh, and we realized we had a lot in common, not only the comedy that I was doing, but also in terms of education and our point of views, politically. And uh, at the end of the meal, they said, we'll make you a deal. If you teach the monkeys for two or three months, work with them on improvisation and uh, getting to know one another and acting in general uh, and do well with that, we'll give you an episode to direct. <laughs> wow. How was that? I said, that was fabulous. I mean, I couldn't believe my good fortune. We shook hands on that. I paid the check. <laughs> they left. <laughs> wow. Uh, so that was really the beginning. I worked with the monkeys for, I guess, a couple of months and uh, we did theater games and we did uh, improvisational games and each of them worked on characters, different kinds of characters to a point where they kind of began to communicate on levels that you have to have when you are a group. And uh, it was with that sense of communication and uh, chemistry. So with that, we began to uh, film our first episode. They had made a pilot, which they discarded or put aside for a while, and with a new script and uh, some great ideas by a very talented group of writers, we began directing and uh, performing and filming the first episode of The Monkees. And from day one, I felt comfortable and alive and happy and communicative with all of the crew and the cast, and it just went great. I mean, I really felt like I was a natural, that I had really fallen into it, because the only... The only the time I'd been behind a camera was in New York. I had directed two or made two 16-millimeter black-and-white shorts, uh, which had won some awards and gotten some attention. And I think, actually, Bob and Bert had seen them as well. Uh. So they knew I had filmmaking as a background, uh, as well as acting. In any case, it went great. And it went so well, in fact, that the first episode I directed was the episode that won the Emmy that year. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. And that was the episode Royal Flush? Yes. I, I want to I ask you about the, the comedy styles. I, I know they were really heavy on getting the boys 
acquainted with the Marx Brothers and the Three Stooges. Was that more of your idea, or was that the idea of Bob Rafelson and Bert Schneider? I mean, I think we all loved those kinds of the Three Stooges and the, the Marx Brothers and uh, uh, American humor, the history of American humor on film. And uh, that fed into us, certainly. I mean, I think we we were much more American than the uh, than the Beatles. Their humor is much more subtle and much more English, as it should be. We were flat out funny. <laughs> we, you know, we just put it out there. And uh, we're very bold and uh, very physical. Uh, and I think the, the style that I created, doing the monkeys, continued through the two years that they were on the air. And led to, I think, and I, I say this with a great deal of pride, to uh, music videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that same kind of quick cutting and camera moves and flash camera uh, went on from what I was doing to what they were doing uh, in the videos. Do you recall what what comedy styles worked and what didn't work with the boys? No. <laughs> no, I don't think it's a... I think it's every day you come to the set alive and awake and ready to create, and whatever kind of comes up feeds what you're doing. So uh, it was really a, an improvisational life. You know, every day was was a new day, and so in every scene there were new demands, and we would meet those demands, and we would either feel that they were good or not so good, and Rafelson and Schneider were in the editing room, so they were making us look even better by cutting out the stuff that wasn't good. <laughs> uh, and... Um, and that's kind of how it went. We also would go to the beach, for example, with the four boys, and I would just say, okay, roll down the hill. Uh, <laughs> do a funny walk. Throw sand on each other. I mean, whatever. You know, we would just kind of make it up as we went along. And there was such kind of freedom in that uh, because both Rafelson and Schneider knew that we had something very special going, the five of us, that they kind of let us kind of have our way. I didn't feel any restrictions whatsoever, which for an artist is really a, a magical place to be. So did you create the monkey walk? Yeah, I mean, we did it together. You mean the ones where they overlap? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but those walks were done in, in movies long before we did. While you were making up these fun dance moves and everything, were you playing music on the beach at all while you were doing that? Not really, no. We were pretty much hearing the music in our heads. <laughs> so it seems like you were the honorable fifth monkey. So was it hard balancing being one of them and then having the responsibility to stay on a schedule and put out a network show? Yes. Uh, I had to work very quickly, and our crew had to work very quickly. We would sometimes get 40 and 50 shots a day, which for a movie crew was a lot of shooting. But we needed that much film in order to cut together the sequences that we had. Now, there's one gag in particular I've always loved, even as a kid, and that's when it's it's the shot that's in the intro of the show, and that's the monkeys pushing Davy on a bed in the streets of Los Angeles. Did you guys just do that gorilla style, or did you have permits for that? Yeah, no, it was gorilla style. <laughs> I was right outside the studio on uh, Gower Street, so we just took him out there and did that, and did some running around, and drove the monkey mobile around and did shots of them in the monkey mobile. And we had that, that kind of freedom because nobody was saying no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those days are long over. <laughs> I know. That, that's wow. one, of, one of the greatest shots. I, that's inspired me to do any kind of guerrilla filmmaking or podcast thing is that shot of the monkeys pushing, pushing Davey in the bed through the streets of Los Angeles. <laughs> Now, one of our holiday traditions between me and Sarah is watching the Monstrous Monkey Mash, the episode that you directed that used all the traditional uh, monsters. There's a, a cutaway to you actually directing Mickey through a monkey scream. Not good. Uh, Would you like a little bit bigger? Hmm? That was my medium scare. Oh, do another one. Would you like a long one? A small one. Small one? Yeah. <laughs> good. Was this your idea to break the fourth wall? which is something that was way out of the norm for 60s television. We did a lot of that. We actually acknowledged the fact that we were shooting a, a series and would uh, relate to the camera every once in a while, break the fourth wall, as you say. 
it was fun. I mean, it was something I came up with when somebody is missing and they say, he's gone. And they all look at the camera and say it in unison. He's gone. You know, it's a way of making fun of ourselves and making fun of the event. And it included the audience, allowed the audience to participate. I love breaking the fourth wall. I think it's great fun. I find it hilarious. Uh, like, as a kid, you don't necessarily get that. But when you watch it again as an adult, these monkeys TV shows, like, there's a point where someone says, oh, we just have to go past Gower. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, Gower Street. And, and into the studio. And into the studio, yeah. So I, I really appreciate that. And that's just a fun, genius move. Well, thanks. I forget what the name of the episode is, but there's one in which we start an episode, we start shooting an episode, and the monkeys say, oh, come on, we've done this again and again and again. Let's not do another one with gangsters. And I say, oh, come on, guys. And I actually walk into the shot, and we have an argument on camera, and I think it's Mickey who says, i got to talk to the writers. And I said, where are you going? And he walks out of the set, across the stage, past makeup and hair, past the crew, past the camera, into a room marked Writers. Do you remember that? Yeah. Actually, I, I think that's two episodes that we're referring to because the one that you walked into the frame when Mickey said, oh, we've done this a, a million times, that was Monkeys in Paris because at that point the monkeys say, okay, we'll take a, a vacation. We're going to Paris. You guys figure out what you're going to do. God. 16 shows straight now. Man, I, I mean, know, every time we start up a show, you start on the monkey and you pull back and say, yeah, yeah, I mean, the tables. I don't know, possible it's, 11 it's shows. There's always a tall heavy and a small heavy. Man, man. you're not being fair. You see one it's monkey episode, you anymore. see all the monkey episodes. Man, on, it's all man, the, the same. The scare is very funny. Try the scare. Come on. Let's go for you, It's funny to you because you have... Well, how do you think I feel? I would direct the same show. Let's go. Let's take. We're going to take a vacation, and you work the show out, right? Because we're not going to be here anymore. We'll see you later. To Paris. 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 Here we come. Paris. And then there was another episode where Mickey says, "A brilliant idea." Well, that's what we need—a brilliant idea. I remember. And then he walks to the writers' room. That's right. And there were the four ancient Asians sitting around old Underwood typewriters typing away. And he said, okay, guys, rewrite this. And they rewrite it, and he takes the pages back all the way across the stage, hands them out, and we continue the episode. That's very far out. Yeah. I mean, you, know, you didn't see that very often in television in those days. 